So I hope this is going to be the first in a longer running uh, mini series within the Greater Game Tip series of low poly mesh techniques. Just ways to speed them up and way to get them done quickly, but also properly. You know, we're not just going to run Decimation Master on everything. So uh, with that said, uh, let's talk a little bit about what a low poly mesh is and what its purpose is. So in my experience, the most productive way to think about your low poly mesh is that it's a proxy for the high poly mesh. You know, uh, it's a stand in because you can't bring the high poly mesh in. And so you bring in the low poly mesh instead. Um, as such, your low poly mesh needs to represent the um, spirit of the high poly mesh or the intentions of it. And it sounds a little you know, artsy, but um, that really is a productive way to think about it because um, that will force you in your head to keep in mind things like you know, having enough facets on curved areas and maintaining your silhouette and you know, all the things that are important to a low poly model and not worrying so much about the stuff that's you know, not so important. So your low poly mesh uh, has a dance partner, you know, and that is of course your normal map. Uh, between those two, that's gonna be your representation uh, of your high poly mesh uh, inside the game engine. And uh, each one carries a different role. Uh, your low poly mesh is carrying your silhouette and your general shape and proportions. Uh, you know, and the normal map is carrying the surface details. So uh, keeping that distinction is important because then you won't be you know, thinking or making the mistake that some people make when they get started about you know, thinking that the normal map's gonna save you from curvature errors or that it's gonna convey depth if you just kind of plaster over this hole. You know, you'll see down there and it'll look great. You know, it oftentimes doesn't. So uh, keeping those roles distinct helps with modeling, believe it or not. So having said all that, you know, my goal is not to sit here and blab at you. My goal is to give you a couple of tips for getting through your low poly models quicker. So let's get to it. So here's a pathologically bad uh, high poly model for this example purposes, right? Um, you can see it's got lots of curves, lots of bumps, and the silhouette is pretty important on a piece like this, or it's just not going to sell visually. And if we look at the um, cage on this, if I turn the wireframe on and toggle off the sub you can see the cage is not going to be that much help to us. It's very, uh, very low res, to be honest. And there's too much discrepancy between what this looks like and what the high poly looks like. So we're going to have to do something else. So the way that I found around this is to is to make a copy of the high poly mesh, which I've done here. You can see the high poly mesh is on the right side, and the one I'm going to make the low poly out of is right here. Now this one, well, it's a copy of the high poly, so it looks the same right now. So let me take it down to a subdivision level of one, you know, which is very coarse, but uh, you can see that it does maintain the silhouette just fine. Uh, and if I freeze it from there, and turn off the wireframe, you can see they do uh, they do represent each other. However, uh, if I grab the high poly mesh and freeze it, you have this triangle count next to this triangle count. And th now this is not perfect, you know, really. So if I smooth this over, so I pick, I pick the right mesh and hit it with a smooth. You can see they're you know, they're pretty close. And once this had a normal map on it, uh, it would look fine. And from here, you know, you can refine this mesh. So obviously this loop here is not needed. And, you know, and just evaluate the loops that don't appear to be necessary, right? That's not really affecting the silhouette much. And let's see this one here, maybe this one. You just start chopping out a couple of edge loops to reduce your, uh, your polygon density, but you still have the intentions of the high poly mesh captured and that's what it's all about. So you be this up, bake it, you know, and you should be good to go. So here's a mesh here that I uh, use that same freeze technique on. And you can see looking around this mesh that uh, it's maintained the silhouette pretty well up here. We've got this nice curve going on. And even if you got close to that in game, you would still buy into it because there'd be a normal map running along this seam that would 
help the transition and all that. But uh, this does has, have its problems because this got frozen from the high poly. So the uh, edge loop distribution is very even, right? So I've got uh, the 64 sides I've got up here. I still have 64 sides inside of here. And the simple solution to that is just to start collapsing edges. Now you need to know where to begin to do that, which is, you know, a judgment call you can make. But typically the best place to do that is down in crevices. Like say you want to start, you know, merging down in this edge down here where it's less noticeable. And you start to just to collapse your edges down. And I don't, you know, I unfortunately don't know a way to do this in batch. Uh, I wish I did. That'd be super handy. But let's just do this small section here, just, just for the education of it, right? So if I do that, and then follow that all the way to the interior of the, uh, of the circular thing, and you can see, uh, hold on, let me just do a bunch more of this and I'll be right back. So for demo purposes, I've chopped out just a small subsection of this mesh. And the crux of the technique is pretty obvious. Uh, the smaller your curves get uh, in relation to each other, the less segments they should have on them. And the way that I do that is equally straightforward. I just look for a crevice like this to hide that transition in and just collapse them. You know, take every second edge and just collapse it all the way down from 64 size to 32 to 16. You know, when you get inside of here, this would be eight because this is not contributing to the silhouette at all. So I don't really want to uh, allocate too many triangles there. Uh, and that's it. You know, it's simple, but you'd be surprised how many people miss that. And finally, a quick word about uh, n-gons and triangles. And not in the way you think. <laughs> so most low poly meshes will end up with some sort of a cap on a cylinder or something like this one. So I've got a 12 sided cylinder here and it's got a cap mesh on it. Now on your low poly mesh, uh, you want to control the triangulation, uh, especially on end guns, because if you don't, you're going to have bake issues and that kind of thing. So your tendency may be to simply give it a, you know, avert in the middle and connect them and move on, right? And that gives you one triangle up here for each side of your cylinder, which means that up here, there's 12 triangles. And while it seems, you know, it's a viable solution, but instead, what if I chopped it up into quads? Uh, well, now if I count these up, there's five quads on top of there. And that means that if I triangulate those quads, there's 10 triangles up there. And you're making a low poly mesh, so this kind of stuff adds up, you know, especially if you have a lot of these on the mesh. So, so, so keep that in mind, right? You can turn your end guns uh, into quads instead of triangles and save yourself a couple of uh, polygons on the back end. Uh, now, I obviously have ideas for future videos in this series, but if there's anything specific about low poly meshes or low poly techniques that you guys want to know, uh, please leave it down in the comments. Uh, knowing what you guys want to see really helps me uh, to organize these videos better. Thanks.